This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. My name is Daniel. I'm 43 years old. I live in Laguna Niguel, California. Over the past 10 years, I've been a uh, paranormal consultant, helping out families and people dealing with spiritual issues or problems. Danny is very well respected in the paranormal community. He has helped countless people. He's helped celebrities and local leaders. He can feel if something is going on, like walk into a house, he feels it. He'll go directly to that spot before anybody tells him what's going on. Looks like a shadow just went by the door. He's been featured on TV shows and documentaries, and he was constantly being interviewed. And it would dip down into the pool and up. I am an expert in the field, and I'm well-respected, well-known. I was speaking worldwide. In our yard, Silence! No, Silence! No, 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 no. Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. My wife, Sandy, is the most amazing person that's ever blessed my life. <laughs> and my son is my pride and joy. One hug from him just removes so much negativity, it gives me hope. Love you, Bob! My family means everything to me, and I had it all, but now I'm surrounded by darkness. I am an alcoholic. I wake up at three in the morning and I'm pouring a drink because my body needs it and craves it. It's no longer about getting drunk. He will have seizures now if he doesn't drink. His heart will race. He sweats profusely. And he has to have alcohol in his system or else he can't function at all. I drink one a day. One a day? And I can't put it down once I start. That's the change. I used to be able to put it away and walk away. and I've lost that self-control, I've lost that will. He doesn't look like the guy that I married, who was healthy and full of life. This isn't Danny anymore. We were very blessed to adopt Daniel. It was one of the greatest days of my life. We had prayed for a baby and got him when he was two days old from the hospital. My mother and father were very religious, very devout, right-wing Southern Baptist. We attended church on a weekly basis, and we went to a Christian school as well, so those foundations were laid early for us. Growing up as a child, I felt gifted. The phone would ring, I would know who it was, who passed away. I felt our house was haunted, the door would open and shut, and I'd say, there's the ghost. This brought conflict with their religious beliefs. Very quickly, I was told that my gifts were of the devil. It was not a good thing, it was a bad thing. And I felt like I wasn't good enough for a domineering father or a devout, loyal Christian mother. I felt very isolated, very lost, very alone. I began to use and drink to numb out the voices, the presence, the feelings, the emotions. Being a Christian and knowing the scriptures, I had a hard time agreeing that a gift could bring him such torment. By 13, I was drinking NyQuil and popping pills, and by 15, I was doing coke, by 16, I was doing meth. And it was all to cope with these outside influences and stimuli that I couldn't deal with. During his junior year, he had thoughts of suicide, and he slept a lot and seemed to be sick a lot. And then at the end of his senior year, he just left home and did not graduate. I was a drifter, I was a floater. At times, my family didn't know where I was for two, three years at a time. But it was a fresh start. It was not being condemned for my gifts. Of course, I was still using, I was still drinking, I was still drugging. Ten years ago, I found myself in the middle of a negative haunting or a demonic haunting. I talked to pastors and priests and clergy trying to get help for my own situation. And I figured, you know, what the hell? If, if I'm gonna suffer, why not help people? So when I devoted myself to helping other people in need with spiritual problems. Danny and I met on a paranormal investigation. 
and we both knew the other person almost instantly. I'd never experienced that before. I'd heard of it, never experienced it. She was my soulmate. It was a magnetic connection. It was so strong, so powerful. She saw what I was fighting. She understood my battles. Danny and I just worked, meshed really well together because I'm considered a sensitive and Danny definitely is. And we started to build within that paranormal community a name for ourselves. We started to be contacted by very credible people for the use of our paranormal evidence and the use of our expertise and how we got that evidence. She was the beginning of four and a half years of sobriety. Her love replaced my addiction to alcohol and to drugs. I've been married to Danny for eight years now. And for the first three to four years, our marriage was fantastic. We were best friends. But then everything changed. Within two months, of getting my lupus. I was bedridden, unable to work. He went from being professional, you know, working all the time, to lying in bed, and he would go to bed on a Friday, wake up on a Tuesday. My doctors prescribed me 15 to 20 medications. Suddenly, I'm on opiates and narcotics just to deal with my disease. My addiction followed quickly. At first, it started with a beer or two a week. To not take the medications and give my stomach and my body a break from being over-medicated. And then it was two days a week, and then three. Now it's every three hours that I have to have alcohol in my system just to function and not seize. Danny is using his lupus to excuse his addiction. He found the perfect diagnosis to hide behind because it's not well documented what happens. So he just lies in bed all day and saying, it's my lupus. I'm in pain, it's my lupus. And that's when I got the worst news of my life. The last six months have been dreadful and Danny started getting really paranoid. He is now blaming the spiritual realm for his addiction and his problem. Are you there? He's become psychotic to the point that he's hallucinating. Speak now or show yourself. You messed up my relationship with my wife and I have the right to know why. He's very sick, and I don't think that he can keep going this way. Danny has to have this intervention. He has to go to rehab. He has to. There is just no other option. Don't be Howard. Come on, show yourself. I don't know which came first, the demons or the addiction. It's like they both feed each other. All I know is that it's killing me. The worst is over, the best is yet to come. And it's really important that when he walks in, he isn't scared about who's here, that he knows everyone here really cares about him. You okay, man? Don't believe it's critical to mankind in the future. Spiritual pain. news. At the moment, he's in a place where he's taken something not quite with us, so it may take a little bit more time to get him over here this morning. So will they not bring him in this condition, or? Well, we... what are we gonna do with him? I mean, we can't sit him down and pour out your heart to somebody who is not on the planet. His belt is falling off too, Jesus Christ. I should have had pants with him. Do they have any idea how much he took or what he took or anything? Uh, when they asked him what he took, he mumbled Smurfs. I think that's the morphine reference. Yeah. Did he get a script filled on morphine? Not that I'm aware of. Um, he's in the van. That's awesome. Can you tell me your name? Daniel, what's your date of birth? You picked me a wonderful project. What? You picked me a wonderful project. You picked ah. a wonderful project? Yeah, analogy. Okay, hold on. Hold on, let me, let me go in front of you to help you out, okay? Here's your lighter. Should, I, should, I shouldn't have got it over. Should we go for a little walk, huh? Um, yeah, I'll just... Uh, okay. My son using...
Hey. Hi, Daniel. How you feeling? Ooh, soft lighting. Hi, baby. Hi. How you feeling? Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, Get off your chest for a while. Um, you have missed major events in Gabriel's life. You have missed being a father, being a husband, and being a son. You miss days and even weeks at a time of your life. You push those away who love you the most while trying to help strangers who know and love you the least. You are only existing when you could be living the amazing life that God intended. I feel like a single mother. I take on almost every role, wife, mom, breadwinner, housekeeper, nurse, bookkeeper. Are you awake? I'm constantly worried about you. I struggle daily, but keep going because I know I have to. I feel like I've been let down and not loved. If you choose not to accept this gift, I can only believe that you do not want to get better. Therefore, I will be forced to file for divorce, and Gabriel and I, and Gabriel and I will begin a healthy life together. You will be on your own. I will not love you to death. No. There it is. I'm so excited. At my previous facility, I had almost 60 days sober, but I wasn't doing what I should have done in the program. And as a result, I relapsed. I left. I am embarrassed, but I own it. I messed up but here at Destination Hope. I feel good. There's more calm and peace. There's a silence to the chatter in my head. God kept me alive for a reason, and I have a purpose, and he's not going to let me go. He's not going to let you go, but you got to do the work to catch up to the work he wants you to do. How long are you planning on staying? I'm staying through the end of the 60-day program. After that, I would like to be closer to my son. I need him as a part of my life. <laughs>